Skoda Octavia was once the least sophisticated of all the Volkswagen Group's family hatchback products. Not anymore. Almost nothing has been held back for this fourth generation version. It's still bigger and better value than most of its rivals. A Mondeo sized medium range hatch for the price of a Focus sized one. The difference now though is that it's clever enough once again to change the way you think about Skoda. You can trace the Skoda success story of the last few decades back to the original launch of one model, this one, the Octavia, the fourth generation of which we're going to test today. This has long been the checkmaker's best-selling model, usually accounting for around a third of the company's total output, and over 6.5 million Octavias have been sold over the last quarter of a century, courtesy of production not only in the Czech Republic, but also in India, Russia and China too. That's in addition to the further 363,000 Spartak 440 and 445 Octavia models sold in the 60s. That post-war model was one of communist Europe's favourite family runabouts in the Cold War period. In all then, it's quite a legacy for this Mark IV Octavia to live up to, hatch and estate versions of which were launched here in the spring of 2020. Right from its very first appearance in 1996, the Octavia has been a car that's always supersized its value proposition, offering more space than the class norm. Now for first and second generation versions, respectively the Type 1U and Type 1Z models, that class saw competition against Focus and Astra class family hatches. The Mark III Type 5E model of 2012 took a step up in the world, still a family hatch sector car, but by then virtually big enough to compete with Mondeos and Insignias in the larger medium range segment. This fourth generation version continues to offer that kind of proposition with increased dimensions and improved practicality. What's changed though is that the simple straightforward virtues which used to characterise Octavia ownership have been embellished quite a lot here. In fact, Skoda claims that this car can redefine sector standards for equipment and technology much as its VW Group cousin, the Mark 8 Volkswagen Golf has done, and in this case, do so with a much stronger value proposition. This Octavia uses all the same engineering as that Golf, and that's shared also with latest versions of the Seat Leon and the Audi A3. So buyers get the option of plug-in and mild hybrid engineering, and a completely new digitalized cabin with a kind of media and safety tech that until a few years ago, family hatch folk could only dream about. Plus, there's striking new exterior design and a big step up in perceived quality too, all of which delivers a signpost to the kind of direction that the Czech brand wants to go in the future. So, will the UK's ongoing love affair with the Octavia continue? Let's put this car to the test and find out. The core attributes haven't changed much here. On the surface, much is different with this fourth generation Octavia. It's sleeker, digitalized, it's equipped with various electrified engines, and in almost every way, it's a touch more upmarket. Yet, under the skin lies much the same MQB platform which underpinned its predecessor, which means that all the engineering stuff that really matters is much the same which in turn explains why the driving experience on offer isn't that much different from before either. Like its predecessors, this Skoda remains a family hatch segment contender that's very much targeted at the pragmatic family motorist. He or she values comfort, reassuring handling, refinement and quality. And he or she would be mildly surprised by the notion that a car of this kind should offer anything more. It isn't as sharp to throw around as something in this class like, say, a Ford Focus, but then why would it need to be? 
And it is perhaps with that in mind that the German development team who created this Octavia felt able to be equally pragmatic when it came to issues of suspension setup. A sophisticated multi-link rear suspension package has been developed for this car, but the Czech brand has decided that, uh, as with the previous generation design, mainstream Octavia buyers won't really notice its absence, as with the Volkswagen Golf and the Seat Leon models that share nearly all of this Skoda's engineering. Uh, the volume variants developing 150 PS or less get a torsion beam arrangement which is cheaper to make and assemble. Basically only high performance VRS model customers get to enjoy multi-link motoring or more ordinary variants with four-wheel drive and that's a confection that wasn't offered from launch. Does this rather basic approach to suspension engineering really matter? Well, probably not. Uh, the downsides of sticking with a turn-of-the-century torsion beam arrangement only really become uh, evident over very poor surfaces where the car does fidget around a bit or if you're throwing the car about on a country road, say. Uh, both of those are scenarios in which the more sophisticated multi-link rear suspension setup would leave this Skoda more composed. Uh, if you miss its absence, then you can pay more for DCC, Dynamic Chassis Control Adaptive Damping, and that enables you to tweak the suspension to suit the road and to suit your mood. It works through the various settings of drive mode select. Uh, now that is standard from mid-range trim upwards and it alters throttle mapping, uh, steering feel and on the DSG automatic models, gear shift timings to suit your chosen driving style. Now we'll come back to drive dynamics and this car's excellent cruising refinement, uh, but first you're gonna to want to know about the range of engines now on offer. Despite the current zeitgeist, many buyers of this model will still want to fuel from the black pump, and if you don't mind uh, being a touch politically incorrect, say, uh, this Octavia's latest two liter TDI Evo unit, which is now offered in a choice of outputs, is one of the cleanest and the most sophisticated diesels out there. It is still not the quietest engine of its kind that we've ever tried, but it does waft along on a pleasantly broad wave of torque, and with manual transmission in 116 PS form, it makes 62 in 10.3 seconds on the way to 131 miles an hour. With a seven-speed DSG auto fitted to this car in more powerful two-liter TDI 150 PS guys, those figures are improved to 8.7 seconds and 141 miles an hour. Increasingly though, buyers in this segment are gonna be switching to petrol power and more frequently, petrol power with some form of electrification. So that's reflected in the range of TSI green pump fueled units that the Czech brand now offers. As with the previous model, things kick off with a kind of engine that you might initially think uh, would be more suited to a super mini, a little three cylinder, one litre unit offering 110 PS, but which is deceptively able at uh, the task of shifting nearly 1.4 tonnes of Octavia about. 62 miles an hour from rest takes 10.8 uh, seconds en route to 128 miles an hour. And if you'll mainly be using this car for shorter suburban trips, uh, that base variant could be really all you need. Fully laden or on longer trips, so that little three cylinder engine's relatively meager reserves of pulling power might start to show, at which point you might wish you'd stretch to one of the four cylinder options. There's either a diesel or the power plant that we're trying right here, the usual VW Group 1.5 litre TSI unit offered in this case in a single 150 PS state of tune. Here, the performance is delivered with a more relaxed gait, thanks to Miller Cycle technology, which delivers maximum torque 35% earlier than with conventional processes. As a result, 62 miles an hour occupies 8.2 seconds on the way to 142 MPH, if you're quick with the completely redeveloped uh, six-speed manual gearbox. A typical Octavia customer, though, is someone quite likely to want an automatic transmission, and if you specify that with either a 1.0-litre or a 1.5-litre TSI model, you'll get yourself a slice of the electrified technology that we referenced earlier. 
In the case of the two smaller TSI engines, we're talking mild hybrid tech, uh, courtesy of Skoda's E-Tech system. Now, it's easy to get terminologies mixed up here. Like the mild hybrid tech that Ford uses, this isn't any kind of proper full hybrid, the sort of thing that might be capable of providing Prius-like periods of electric-only driving. Uh, there's nothing like that. Uh, Skoda's overall objective instead here was to make its engines more efficient via smoother transitions between between driving, cruising and resting. Now to that end, uh, there is an integrated 48 volt BAS belt alternator starter generator, which powers a 12 volt main electrical setup in which a 48 volt compact lithium ion battery in the boot stores energy that's harvested via the KERS kinetic energy recovery system. That additional electricity might be used to boost the engine when it's accelerating or to restart it when the stop-start system kicks in at low speeds. Or this surplus energy might instead be directed to help power ancillary functions. As long as you've limited your expectations to these things that the mild hybrid tech here has actually been developed to deliver rather than eye-catching Prius-style efficiency figures, you should be pretty satisfied with the way that that all works in an Octavia E-Tech model in practice. Thanks to the electrical assistance, refinement's even better and enough battery boost is generated for the petrol engine to be rarely bothered for acceleration duties around town. Uh, as advertised, there's a fraction more accelerative boost too, although that isn't reflected by the performance figures. Uh, they almost exactly replicate those of the equivalent manual models. Useful but marginal benefits then, uh, reflective of the fact that, as I mentioned earlier, the E-Tech versions of this car won't give you full hybrid technology and your family hatch. If you want an Octavia that does, you'll need one of the plug-in hybrid variants, which start with the Octavia IV model. Now this features a tried and tested VW Group PHEV package, used already by Skoda's larger Superb IV, and familiar since 2016 uh, from use in Volkswagen's Golf GTE. That means a 150 PS 1.4 litre TSI petrol engine made to a six-speed DST automatic gearbox and an 85 kilowatt electric motor powered by a 13 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery. The WLTP all-electric driving range is quoted at 37 miles, which you won't get anywhere near if you explore the quoted all-electric top speed of 80 miles an hour. The Octavia IV has a total power output of 204 PS, and that's quite a bit down on the 245 PS of the uh, Golf GTE we just mentioned. To get that, you'll need this plug-in package fitted to a slightly sportier Octavia, the VRS IV, uh, which boosts the system's power output from 350 to 400 newton meters, although the electric driving range falls slightly to 34 miles. The VRS model gets fine-tuned sport suspension, lowered by 15 millimeters, and it also comes with a couple of conventional non-electrified units, a 245 PS 2-litre TSI petrol and a 200 PS 2-litre TDI diesel. Uh, the VRS diesel can optionally be had with four-wheel drive, basically the same setup that's fitted to the go-almost-anywhere Octavia Scout Estate. That's a model that's sadly no longer offered in our market. Whatever flavour of Octavia model you happen to prefer, it'll come with the fresh generation of drive assist technology which has been ushered in by this fourth generation model. So let's finish this section by briefing you on that. Now what's important to understand here is the switch from passive to active technology. Now previously the optional ACC, Adaptive Cruise Control System, uh, that is now standard from mid-spec range upwards, uh, merely braked and accelerated the car uh, based around a preset speed. Now it uses the car's front camera system, GPS data and a host of sensors to drive the car predictively. So when ACC is set, the car knows in advance about bends and roundabouts and upcoming traffic flow. Plus, the Skoda will adapt itself to speed limits as you enter them. Adaptive cruise control is also an integral part of this car's clever new travel assist system, uh, which is either standard or optional, depending on the trim level you choose, and enables uh, partially assisted so-called level 2 autonomous driving. 
the old Mark III Octavia model's traffic jam assist setup had an element of this. It paired ACC technology with lane assist adaptive lane guidance so the car could effectively drive itself in traffic queues. But because that tech only worked at up to 37 miles an hour, it was only good for urban conditions. So Skoda has developed travel assist from it, which also works with ACC and lane assist, but provides partially assisted driving at highway speeds of up to 130 miles an hour. Now that's made possible by the integration of the predictive technology we just mentioned and the addition here of a new capacitive steering wheel which has to sense your hands on its rim otherwise if warnings are ignored it'll disable all the drive systems and bring the car to a gradual stop at the side of the road. This is all the kind of technology that we think a typical buyer of this Octavia will really like. As I mentioned earlier, this is the kind of customer who will really appreciate this car's cruising refinement and its relaxed cruising demeanour too. Uh, they won't care that the steering's not exactly live with feedback through the bends, uh, valuing instead the fact that it's accurate and precise. At urban speeds it's light enough for excellent manoeuvrability, while out of town it waits up nicely, enough to allow you to appreciate the benefits of the XDS torque vectoring system that uh, lightly breaks the inside front wheel through tight bends, sharpening turn-in and ensuring that all the power gets onto the tarmac but that kind of driving will take this car very much out of its comfort zone. You'll probably prefer to stay within that, perhaps easing back and appreciating all the benefits that the extra tech on offer here gives you. Up to 26 extra driver assist systems, for example, and optional embellishments like a head-up display and full LED matrix headlights that adapt to the road and weather conditions as you drive. It's all very different from the simple, straightforward Octavia that we were first presented with back in 1996, but time moves on and almost everything's different here. You might just feel, as we do though, that when you get right down to it, the character of this car is very much the same. Octavia design has always centred on simplicity, although this model line has previously been worked on by some of the industry's most noted stylists. The Mark II version was penned by Thomas Inglath, now chief executive of the Polestar brand, uh, while its successor was the work of Josef Caban, whose CV also includes the Bugatti Veyron. Uh, the Mark IV take on this Skoda doesn't have a celebrity designer sign-off, and perhaps it doesn't need it thanks to a level of visual sophistication never previously seen from an Octavia. Whereas before there was a slight feeling of the body shell being a touch oversized for its golf derived family hatch platform, now the car seems much better proportioned, both in this hatch form and as the alternative estate. The visual sophistication we referred to just now is particularly evident here at the front where this car has a greater look of maturity this time around and that's something reflected by the bolder, wider chrome framed grille and the more angular headlights that now feature full LED themes. Uh, these angled creases flowing down towards the slim front corner fog lamps look particularly smart and as before the heavily contoured bonnet features a raised centre section, uh, the forward part of which better displays that Skoda brand badge. From the side you get a better perspective on this Mark IV model slightly larger dimensions. This hatch version is 19mm longer than its predecessor and the alternative estate gets a 22mm length increase. That's enough to make both variants quite a lot larger than the class norm. This hatch, for example, is a full 311 millimetres longer than a comparably priced Ford Focus. So there's more metal for your money, but then the Octavia has always offered that. What hasn't previously been evident is the kind of richness of design that you get here. These swage lines, this one just above the door handles, and this more angular one, uh, the lower crease that flows up from the front wheel arch, uh, they're more deeply etched to make more of a statement. The aerodynamics, which are rated at just 0.24 CD for this hatch, are now sleek enough to make this Skoda one of the slipperiest cars in its segment. And that rear C-pillar there is now almost coupe-like. 
Uh, the wheels are generally bigger this time around too. They vary between 16 and 19 inches in size depending on variant. We have the 16 inch Twister Aero rims fitted here. The rear is also quite different from anything previously seen on an Octavia. These full LED lamp clusters are now horizontally orientated to better emphasize this Mark IV design's 15 millimeter increase in width uh, with Skoda script, once again complete with the checkmaker's little Caron above the S, proudly displayed in between. Uh, both hatch and estate variants get a more angular tailgate and a more curvaceous bumper, which incorporates these slim corner red reflectors. What hasn't changed is what you can't see, uh, the supremely flexible MQB modular transverse matrix chassis, which was introduced with this model's predecessor and which has underpinned countless VW Group models since the Mark 7 Golf first introduced it back in 2012. In this form, it now features added rigidity and a stiffer hot formed steel and aluminium structure. Right, time to take a look inside. Uh, pausing as we do to note that the usual uh, typical Skoda touch, the umbrella secreted in the door panel, hasn't been forgotten. Although now there is the no cost option of changing this umbrella for a snow brush if you thought you'd use that more often. Now that's a piece of traditional Skoda. Uh, what's provided in this cabin though is anything but. Now with previous Octavias you always got the feeling that the design was being deliberately dumbed down in order not to trespass on golf territory. Well, as French artist Eugène Delacroix once observed, a taste for simplicity cannot last for long. So put simply, uh, this model line's previously rather dour, simple cabin treatment was holding it back from making conquest sales to customers who weren't necessarily Skoda people. So that pretense has been well and truly abandoned here. I mean, in many ways, it's all rather grand. Uh, there are seven trim changes on the dashboard alone, one of them featuring a stitched finish. And wherever you look, squidgy soft touch surfaces predominate. It's all another world from what you get in, uh, say, a Focus or in an Astra. And that's even before you start spending any more cash. If you dress this cabin up a bit with leather upholstery and the optional coloured ambient lighting strips which uh, flow across this central chrome trim panel, it'd all look very upmarket indeed especially given that large high-tech screens now predominate across the dash. Almost all variants get the setup that features here, a 10.25 inch virtual cockpit instrument binnacle screen and a big 10 inch center dash infotainment monitor. Now we'll start with the virtual cockpit display, which you view through this unusual new two spoke multifunction steering wheel. It's fashioned in a style that apparently harks back to some of Skoda's more historic models and it features smart chromed knurled scroll wheels. This binnacle screen is a little smaller than the virtual cockpit display you get in Audis, but it works in much the same way uh, with layout arrows on buttons to the right of the steering wheel, offering a choice of four graphic layouts. Now, mainly you'll probably use this classic one with two virtual dials, uh, the gauges separated by a central digital speedo and presented with typical Skoda white outer rings, each dial uh, centrally incorporating customizable info. Uh, further clicks on the layout arrow buttons scroll you through three more themes, a basic digital screen, one with 3D driving assist graphics, and another showing a full width navigation map, which can display differently from the mapping shown on the central screen. Now, whatever your choice of instrument screen layout, uh, customizable data boxes are provided to the left and to the right. You can choose for these to display info on audio settings, drive assistance features, uh, a compass, consumption info, driving time, average speed, navigation, or coolant temperature. Anything this instrument binnacle screen can't tell you, and much of it can, will be covered off by the 10-inch 
center dash touchscreen we mentioned earlier. Uh, now this is a decent step forward from the glass fronted monitor that was fitted to the previous generation model, uh, which already was better than rival setups. Now this replacement Columba system uh, really puts the Octavia even further beyond its non-VW group rivals reach in this regard when it comes to clarity and ease of use. Uh, you will have to get used to a few things about it though, uh, primarily the curious slider at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, that's uh, for volume control. Not everyone likes it. If you hate that feature, then you'll be pleased to find that more conventional volume buttons are provided on the steering wheel. The main centre dash screen menu allows you to choose from key options like radio media, assist, smart link, vehicle, phone, navigation and sound sections. Now this monitor's built-in eSIM enables you to create a Wi-Fi hotspot and you can hold and drag display icons to move them around or you can create a split screen which will enable you to, for example, display a sat nav map, Bluetooth, car info and phone settings all at the same time. There is also an online shop that will allow you to upgrade certain elements of the car's technology after you've bought it using an over-the-air system of updates that allow Skoda to potentially improve this screen's functionality over time too. This screen also controls the various ventilation functions. Now that isn't ideal, but it's managed reasonably well by the way that things have been configured here. Uh, climate options always display along the bottom of the display and below that, uh, just above these twin central vents, lie a couple of buttons which are devoted to ventilation needs and one of which switches the screen to a climate layout and that will give you shortcut options for frequent climate needs. Uh, defog windows, uh, warm my feet, warm hands, uh, cool my feet and fresh air. And we still don't find it all as easy to use as a conventional analog setup would be though. With navigation fitted, this monitor also includes LoRa, which is Skoda's digital assistant hybrid voice control system. It reacts to voice commands like uh, go to Milton Keynes, activating navigation, or I'm cold, activating the air conditioning. Clever digital microphones are able to ensure clear voice recognition and also locate the person who's speaking, either the driver or the front passenger. So if the front passenger asks for the heated seat to be switched on, for example, the system will recognise the identity of the questioner and will only activate the front passenger's heated seat. And it's really neat. Uh, this LoRa system uses the same software and functionality as the Hello Volkswagen setup in the Mark 8 Golf, but for some reason we simply haven't found it to be as intuitive or responsive, and sometimes we've just got tired of waiting for it to work or of needing to use exactly the right words to ensure precise functionality. Enough with screens and digitalization. Uh, what else do you really need to know here? Well, maybe that the ergonomics are pretty faultless and that the seats, which come with lumbar adjustment, are brilliantly supportive. DSG Auto Gearbox models now get a smaller Porsche style shift by wire stubby lever that's almost like an electric switch and that frees up space on the center console for extra stowage. On the subject of stowage, there's a big air conditioned glove box. There are large flock line door bins which can each hold a 1.5 litre bottle of water. Plus you get a lidded box between the seats which doesn't have any media ports but which does have a neat ratcheting top to rest your elbow on. Um, a sliding cover shields these central uh, cup holders which incorporate clasps so you can undo a bottle top with one hand. Plus there's a big bin in front of the gear lever that can also be cooled and which has a couple of USB ports, although they are of the USB-C variety, so you may have to have this unsightly converter lead. Uh, there is also a ticket clip in the driver's sun visor here, and there's another on the right-hand A-pillar, plus a coin tray next to the electronic handbrake. And Skoda has remembered to incorporate an overhead sunglasses compartment. There's a feeling of greater spaciousness and airiness at the wheel of this Mark IV model that loyal Octavia folk will like. Everything is ideally placed for easy access and there's lots of adjustment for both the seat and the wheel. Upmarket touches include the perforated trimming for the door cards, uh, the way that the headlight switch gear is now of the button type and the relocation of the powered mirror switches next to the buttons for the electric windows. 
Uh, there's even a USB-C point up by the rearview mirror in case you want to fit a dash cam. Not everything is ergonomically ideal though. These front A pillars, they're a touch on the thick side. Uh, you notice that particularly at junctions and your over the shoulder vision is a little impaired by the now more coupe-like rear C pillars. So you'll need the standard rear parking sensors. Now let's take a look in the rear and that's a compartment that you access via these wide opening doors. Now once inside, you start to really appreciate the benefits of this Octavius unusually long 2,686mm wheelbase. That's 67 mils longer than a Volkswagen Golf. As a result, it's more spacious back here than any other family hatch segment model, at least for legs and knees anyway. Uh, this Skoda is a touch wider than the Segment Norm 2, so it'll be a bit easier to take three adults back here, although the people concerned will still need to be on pretty friendly terms, and the middle occupant's leg space will be uh, somewhat compromised by this uh, rather prominent central transmission tunnel. There are center air vents below which you'll find a small storage tray above a couple of further USB-C ports. Uh, ice fix charge seat fastenings that feature of course for the outer two seats uh, while the fold out center armrest here incorporates cup holders although unfortunately these are so small that only very tiny bottles and cans would fit. Still uh, these neat smartphone pouches in the seat back pockets, they're standard across the range and you get flock line door bins which are roomy enough to hold a one litre drinks bottle. Uh, there are coat hooks in the grab handles and as at the front there are neat touch sensitive overhead reading lights. For the pricey panoramic glass roof option, well there you'll need to be considering the estate version but do bear in mind if you specify that uh, headroom, which is very reasonable as things are, will be reduced by a few inches. Right, let's finish by heading back to the tailgate, but let's pause on the way to notice another of Skoda's trumpeted so-called Simply Clever touches, uh, this ice scraper that's built into the fuel filler cap. Raise the uh, rather heavy rear hatch, you might want to consider optional powered operation here, and you'll find yourself looking at one of this Octavia's major selling points, a huge aperture opens the way to an absolutely enormous 600 litre load area. This is almost twice as big as the trunk you'll get in a comparably priced Ford Focus and it's 219 litres larger than the cargo area that's offered by the VW Golf. Even supposedly larger medium range models can't match this. It's 10% bigger than a Ford Mondeo, and nearly 20% bigger than a Vauxhall Insignia. Do bear in mind that this capacity will fall if you choose one of the IV plug-in hybrid models uh, thanks to rear battery placement. You're looking at 450 litres for the Octavia plug-in hatch or 490 for an Octavia plug-in estate. And whatever version of this car you choose, a neat touch is this grab handle that hangs down from the open tailgate so that even smaller adults will be able to reach up and pull it down. Uh, this is a practical space too, and it could be more so if Skoda had thought to build in the kind of adjustable height boot floor for this hatch variant that Volkswagen offers on the Golf. You only get that on the estate model, and it now offers 640 litres of boot capacity. Uh, as I said, this is a practical space. As before, there are a pair of pull-out hooks. Uh, there are two corner compartments with slide-out panels, and there's a built-in strap on the right-hand side and a 12-volt socket on the left. Now this central hatch here enables lengthier items like skis to be accommodated without disturbing a pair of rear seat occupants. There would be more room beneath the cargo floor if, very unwisely, you failed to take up the extra cost option of adding in some kind of spare wheel. If you need more room, then you'll want to activate these cargo sidewall catches, which fortunately no longer cost extra. Uh, it is a pity that Skoda hasn't taken the opportunity to build in the kind of 40-20-40 split backrest that some cars in this class do offer, the Mercedes A-Class or the BMW 1 Series, for example. 
Once the 6040 rear bench is folded like this, there's quite a step up from the boot floor. Uh, the provision of an adjustable height boot floor would have eradicated that, of course. And even when you have that on the estate model, uh, the way that the seats fold mean that the load floor isn't quite flat. Still, just look at all the space you get. 1,555 litres in this hatch. And that's a figure that would rise to 1,700 litres in the estate. That equals what you'll get in a large segment estate like BMW's 5 Series Touring. Nothing in this Octavia sector can even approach that. Skoda has long moved away from its budget brand roots. That's evidenced by the fact that Octavia pricing starts from around £20,000. But as we're about to see, that's still very decent value for what you get and few variants are priced at over the £30,000 mark. Uh, should you want the spacious estate rather than this five-door hatch model, there's a £980 model for model premium to find. Uh, the core trim levels, as usual with the Skoda, are base SE. SE technology, that's what we've got here, and mid-range SEL, although of course plusher options are available if you want them. Engine-wise, the recipe for mainstream models is pretty simple, either 2-litre TDI diesel power or a choice of 1 or 1.5-litre TSI petrol units. Skoda still expects quite a few Octavia customers to want a diesel engine, so there are 116 and 150 PS versions of the VW Group's latest 2-litre TDI Evo unit. But increasingly, cars like this will be green pump fueled. Now, the concept of a little 1-litre three-cylinder petrol unit in a car of this relatively substantial size was pioneered with the previous generation model, and it continues with this one. If you'll mainly be using this car for shorter suburban trips, it'll probably be all you really need. You might though be more comfortable taking the step up to the four cylinder 1.5 litre TSI 150 PS power plant we're trying here. That requires a price rise of just under 1500 pounds over the base unit. Either way, if you specify the optional DSG auto gearbox with either of these TSI engines, that transmission's latest shift by wire design allows Skoda to offer you its latest E-Tech mild hybrid technology. Now here, a 48 volt electrical system incorporates an electric motor that helps the engine in certain situations, thus saving fuel. If you can afford a little more and you want to take a step towards more sophisticated electrification in your Octavia, Skoda offers a plug-in hybrid package that we first saw in the larger Superb IV, which pairs a larger battery with a 1.4 litre TSI petrol engine. There is an Octavia IV variant with 204 PS, and a sporty Octavia VRS IV, which ups the output of that power plant to 245 PS. The VRS also comes with a couple of conventional units, uh, 245 PS, 2 litre TSI petrol, and a 200 PS, 2 litre TDI diesel. Now, unfortunately, what we can't have for our market is the Octavia Scout. That's a variant of the estate body style previously available to us, which offers four-wheel drive, SUV styling cues, and a raised ride height. On to the value proposition. Now, the natural starting point here is to compare this Octavia against the three VW Group products that share its platform and its basic engineering, uh, the Seat Leon, the Volkswagen Golf, and the Audi A3. Now, a Leon costs fractionally less than the Octavia in base petrol and diesel form, but it's quite a lot pricey when it's fitted with the 150 PS version of the 1.5 litre TSI petrol engine that this Octavia uses, uh, the unit that we're trying here, as I said. Um, as for the Audi and the Golf, well, surprisingly, it's the A3 that's closer in price to this Skoda. It costs around £2,000 more. For a comparable Golf, well, you'll be looking at around £3,000 more. So you've really got to want that Volkswagen badge to pay that. Uh, do bear in mind that all three of those alternative VW Group models offer quite a lot less rear passenger and boot space than you get in this Octavia. You'll also want to be briefed on the way that other volume family hatchbacks stack up against this Skoda's pricing. Uh, now, in terms of the popular models in the segment that you'll probably be considering, Vauxhall's Astra, that's your cheapest option. That could save you around £1,500 over a comparable Octavia. But it does feel 
quite a lot cheaper inside and again there's much less space. That's a comment that also applies to a Ford Focus. Now that is a model that's comparably priced against this Skoda in base diesel form, but it costs more with a mainstream petrol engine, around uh, 1,000 to 2,000 pounds more, depending on the one that you're looking at. Uh, what about the other popular alternative class options? Well, no rival in the class can approach the amount of boot space that you get with an Octavia, but the two that get closest are the Honda Civic, now that costs around about the same as the Skoda, and the Peugeot 308, which costs a fraction more. Uh, inside, just about every other car you could choose in this segment, uh, space-wise, when you're sitting in the back or when you're loading stuff into the boot, you'll really feel like you're in a car from the class below. Still, if that doesn't matter to you, then you'll want to know that you can uh, potentially save, well, around a couple of thousand by choosing uh, either a Kia Seed or a Hyundai i30. Uh, the Renault Megane, that costs around about the same as this Octavia, and a Mazda 3 or a Mini Clubman will cost you a fraction more. A Toyota Corolla will cost quite a lot more, although that's because it only comes with a full hybrid engine. So that's talked you through the class alternatives. Uh, if having considered those, you conclude, as quite a few customers will, that there's nothing quite like this Skoda in this class, then your mind might be made up by a bit of generosity on the Czech brand's part when it comes to the standard specification. So is that what's been delivered here? Let's see. All Octavias now come with full LED headlights and LED tail lamps. Uh, inside base SE models get an 8.25 inch swing spec central infotainment screen incorporating Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring and an eight speaker DAB audio system. Launch SE first edition variants got that central monitor upgraded to the 10.25 inch size that features across the rest of the range. And they also featured this Mark IV Octavia model's signature cabin touch, a 10.25 inch virtual cockpit customizable instrument binnacle screen, uh, along with LED front fog lights and 16 inch velorum alloy wheels. Uh, entry level Octavia models also deliver rear parking sensors, auto headlamps and wipers, uh, lumbar adjustment for the front seats, climatic dual zone air conditioning and a front central armrest. As you'll have gathered from all of that, enhanced media connectivity has been a big theme here, which perhaps is why there are no fewer than five USB-C ports, two in the front, two in the back, and one by the rear view mirror. Uh, that central screen that we just mentioned, um, now that is permanently connected to the internet, and that's via an embedded eSIM. Uh, now that enables you to have online music streaming and real-time traffic information, amongst other things. And it also allows for what Skoda calls an in-car shop. Now, that will allow you to purchase additional services over the air after vehicle purchase. What about the brand's famous Simply Clever touches? Well, you get those here too, most notably the umbrella and the front door, which can be swapped out for a windscreen snow brush if you prefer that. Uh, there are also smartphone storage pockets in the front seat backs. Uh, there's an ice scraper in the fuel filler cap, and there's a funnel integrated into the lid of the windscreen washer tank. For TDI models, there's also an AdBlue fluid filler tube, and that allows the reservoir to be topped up by a lorry pump nozzle. Uh, the estate now gets an automatically retractable load cover too. Uh, also standard across the range is use of this Czech brand's clever, freely downloadable Skoda Connect app. Uh, with remote access, uh, a year's use of that comes with the car. This allows you to remotely lock or unlock your Octavia from wherever you are. Now, if you've gone and forgotten where you parked it, it'll give you area notification. And if having got that, you still can't find the car in a crowded car park, then the Connect app will allow you to remotely activate either the alarm, the headlights or the horn. Uh, it'll also give you a vehicle health report. It'll help you to schedule servicing and it'll give you various elements of extra driving data too. Uh, probably the main reason you'd upgrade your Octavia to the SE technology trim we have here is to get the Columbus navigation system included on the center dash screen. Now that comes along with Skoda's latest, much more intuitive voice control system. 
Uh, SE Technology spec that also gives you these smarter 16-inch Twister Aero alloy wheels, plus front parking sensors and textile floor mats. If you want to go further, SEL spec gets you quite a lot more of an upmarket feel, which comes courtesy of larger 17-inch Rotare alloy wheels, chrome embellishment for the front bumper and the side window surrounds, and inside, extra silver detailing and smart micro suede finishing for the upholstery and the dash panel. Other SEL features include keyless entry, front parking sensors, adaptive cruise control, rear privacy glass, uh, headlight washers, and a drive mode selection system which alters throttle and steering feel. At the top of the range lie the sporty VRS models. They're identifiable by their black 19-inch alloy wheels, red brake calipers, black exterior body treatment features, and specific LED fog lights. Inside, there's a three-spoke leather multifunction sports steering wheel, uh, front VRS-branded sports seats with coloured decorative stitching in red or silver grey, and an Alcantara-covered dashboard. Right, on to options across the Octavia range. Uh, now, at the time of this test, Skoda hadn't released a full range of extras for the Mark IV Octavia, but we will guide you through a few of the key ones. Now, the brand's keen that you should consider its pricey full LED matrix headlight package. Now, this costs around £1,500, and it includes an AFS, Adaptive Front Light System package. To make this work, uh, each matrix headlight includes a couple of modules. Each one features 22 LEDs, which can be controlled individually to generate a light beam that consists of several segments. Now, these headlamps also provide different lighting modes for various situations and weather conditions, uh, such as city driving, uh, motorway cruising or driving in the rain. And you get an animated coming or leaving home function. Now, that's activated by locking or unlocking the car. The full LED matrix headlight package also includes integrated headlight washers, uh, brighter high functionality for the rear LED lights, scrolling dynamic indicators and cornering front fog lights. Spend a bit more and you can also get the full LED matrix headlight package to incorporate a rear view parking camera. Now that last feature is also available separately. Other optional driving features include Park Assist, which parks the car in parallel or in base spaces for you. Uh, there's also Sport Suspension, which lowers the car by 15 millimeters. Or if, say, you live in an unmade track, an optional rough road chassis offering 15 millimeters more ground clearance. And for the first time on an Octavia, you can have a head-up display. Uh, if you avoid entry-level trim and you've specified either the one-liter petrol engine or the top diesel, then you can specify DCC, Dynamic Chassis Control Adaptive Damping. Now that lowers the car by 10 millimeters and works through the settings of the drive mode selection system we mentioned earlier. Uh, there is also an optional area view surround camera system, which uses four cameras to create a 360 degree image around the vehicle, which is shown on the central display. You might, though, be more tempted by rather more affordable extras like the electrically operated tailgate, and that can be specified with Skoda's virtual pedal system, which allows you to open it by a motion sensor under the rear bumper. Uh, now, for some reason, the powered tailgate option is necessary in order to specify the brand's audio system upgrade. Uh, that's Skoda's Canton sound setup. It delivers a total output of 610 watts via a 10-channel digital amplifier with 12 speakers, 12 preset sound profiles and 3D surround sound. To further embellish the more premium feel of this Mark IV model's cabin, uh, we'd want to look at the LED interior light pack. That includes decorative ambient lighting strips on the dashboard and the doors, which can be set to your choice of 10 colours. Leather upholstery is an affordable option. Uh, there is an optional wireless charging mat too. And you can have a tri-zone climatronic air conditioning system with extra controls for the rear seat passengers. Uh, a heated windscreen, that's another option. And you can have acoustic side windows at the front to further improve refinement. Uh, various winter packs are available 
available too and they include heat for the front and or the rear seats plus a heated steering wheel and heated windscreen washer nozzles. If you go for the estate body style you can also specify a variable height boot floor and a panoramic sunroof. As I mentioned earlier, Skoda is known for its really practical touches and you can add to those with the optional Simply Clever Pack which for £95 more gives you a double-sided boot floor, a media holder and a waste bin. Now while we're talking practicalities, remember that all the car's various USB-C points will need an optional USB adapter if you want them to work with the chunkier USB lead endpoints of older devices. Uh, bear in mind too that on this hatch version you'll have to tell your dealer if you want a rear window wiper included, which does seem a little bit strange. Uh, another no-cost option is textile floor mats, which you can upgrade to all-weather protective interior mats for a little more. Uh, as you'd expect, a tow bar, which is now of the retractable variety, is optional, as is a roof rack. Uh, you can also specify a roof box. Now, for the boot area, you can add protective foil for the leading edge of the loading area and a plastic boot dish to protect the cargo compartment from scrapes and scratches. And don't forget to pay Skoda the extra it wants for the temporary spare wheel. That's available in either standard or space saver forms. As for aesthetics, well, you'll almost certainly be paying your dealer extra for your choice of body shade because the only standard colour is solid energy blue. Uh, beyond that, there's an optional special colour, that's Corita Red, and then various metallic and pearl effect colours. We've got petrol blue metallic here. If you want to pay more, then there are also two exclusive colours, velvet red and crystal black. Uh, you can upgrade to various 17 and 18 inch wheel designs too. No cost options for the interior include the opportunity to switch the upholstery from black to beige and to add in a beige dashboard which includes piano black decorative inserts. Enough with options, uh, let's now take a look at driver assist systems and safety provision. Now you'd expect some sort of autonomous braking system on a car of this kind these days. Uh, Skoda's is called Front Assist and as usual with these sorts of setups, it scans the road ahead as you drive. Uh, now, if a potential collision hazard is detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or you aren't able to perhaps, the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Now, for this Mark IV Octavia model, this setup's city emergency braking system has been enhanced with predictive pedestrian and cyclist protection. Now, that is more specifically able to identify people or cyclists who might be just about to inadvertently step out into your path. Now, should that sort of thing happen, uh, or if, for example, another driver suddenly brakes in front of you, then further help is provided here by a collision avoidance assist emergency steering assist system. Now that is automatically activated to increase steering movement as soon as you have to avoid an obstacle. Every Octavia also gets a lane assist lane keeping system that warns you when you stray out of your lane and applies gentle steering assistance to ease you back into it. Uh, plus you get traffic sign recognition. Now that pictures speed signs as you pass them and then displays them on the centre dash screen. All of this is in addition to all the more usual features that come fitted across the Octavia range and which uh, have helped to justify this car's five star Euro NCAP safety test showing. There's twin front side and curtain airbags, although disappointingly you don't also get an extra one to protect the driver's knees. Uh, there are, of course, Isofix charge seat fastenings on the rear bench. Uh, we also like the inclusion of a multi-collision brake system, which recognises when an impact's occurred and then brakes the car to prevent it from being uncontrollably propelled into the oncoming traffic. It is also worth mentioning that like all current new cars, this one has an emergency call, e-call SOS system, which in the event of an accident where the airbags are triggered will automatically alert the rescue services with your exact GPS location. 
Other conventional safety features include the normal ESC stability control and ASR traction control systems, plus MSR engine braking control, which will stop you skidding if you change down abruptly on a slippery surface. If you do get into a skid, a DSR steering assistance feature will help you to steer out of it. And you get an ABS braking system that's further assisted by CBC, cornering brake control through the bends. Plus, there's an HBA, hydraulic braking assistant, which helps to reduce stopping time when you really slam on all the anchors in an emergency. Plus, all Octavias get a hill hold function, and that stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, plus tyre pressure monitoring and a driver alert system, which will warn you if sensors detect drowsiness. That's the extent of the standard safety kit you get across the range, but plenty more can be added in if you're prepared to pay more. Uh, incidentally, you don't necessarily have to make all the decisions on this at the time of the purchase. Uh, the infotainment system's latest over-the-air functionality uh, means that certain items will be available to update your Octavia at a later date should you decide you need them. Now, Skoda is particularly pleased with a bit of technology that the uh, VW Group is very proud of. It's travel assist setup. Now this enables so-called level two autonomous driving at high speeds. Now this has to work with this Mark IV model's enhanced ACC, adaptive cruise control system, and that's optional with base trim, but otherwise standard. And it now includes a stop and go function for the DSG auto models. This means that the car will automatically stop itself and then seamlessly start itself off again if you come across a highway tailback. Anyway, once you've got ACC on your Octavia, you can pay extra for travel assist. Now, this is basically a development of the previous model's traffic jam assist system, which could accelerate, brake, steer and maintain distance to the vehicles ahead. But whereas that previous automatic longitudinal and lateral guidance system could only be used at up to 37 miles an hour, travel assist can almost completely control the car for you at speeds of up to 130 miles an hour. Now that is providing you keep your hands on the new capacitive steering wheel. Although we did read recently that uh, taping an uncooked sausage to the steering wheel rim should be enough to fool the system sensors into thinking that you were holding it. So perhaps a little bit more development is needed there. Uh, if you have an Octavia with a DSG automatic gearbox, then your travel assist pack can also include a clever emergency assist setup, uh, and that can take over driving duties completely if you become incapacitated, and it'll steer the car to the side of the road and bring it to a safe and gradual stop. Further safety options include a local traffic warning function, which automatically warns of traffic holdups in the car's immediate surroundings, such as the end of a traffic jam. And there's what Skoda calls Crew Protect Assist, which uses sensors from the front assist setup to prepare the car to help you survive an impact if those sensors deem a collision to be inevitable. Uh, that'll mean your belts will be instantly pre-tensioned, uh, while the windows and the sunroof, if that's been fitted, will be immediately closed. You can also specify blind spot detection, uh, that's standard further up the range, which warns you if you're just about to dangerously pull out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. Uh, other options include turn assist, which at junctions can detect oncoming traffic at an early stage when you're turning left and then warn the driver or automatically stop the vehicle. And there is also an option uh, which is exit warning. Now that uh, lets occupants know if another vehicle or a cyclist is approaching from behind when the car door is opening. All in all, it's very reassuring. The sensible people who tend to buy Octavias are the sort of folk who want a frugal set of running costs. And by and large, this Mark IV model effectively delivers them, uh, even though it launched with broadly the same mainstream power plants that Skoda was offering to customers in older versions of the previous model. Uh, not quite the same, of course. Uh, these units have obviously been fully updated to the latest Euro 60 temp emission spec, and they've been tuned to meet the more testing RDE2 emission standard. Now, before we delve down a little into the Czech brand's engine technology here, 
here. Let's begin with delivering you the WLTP rated stats that you'll need for the conventional volume variants that you're most likely to choose with figures that will base around the manual gearbox hatch package that we're trying here. For petrol people, both the entry level units, the 110 PS 3 cylinder 1 litre TSI and the 150 PS 4 cylinder 1.5 litre TSI deliver very similar returns. For the 1 litre model up to 54.3 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 117 grams per kilometre of CO2. For this 1.5 litre TSI variant, it's up uh, to 50.4 mpg and 127 grams per kilometre of CO2. Uh, some class perspective, well it's very similar to the kind of readings that you get from directly equivalent versions of the main competitors. The diesel would of course do better in terms of CO2 and MPG anyway, especially one of the diesels freshly fitted to this fourth generation Octavia. Uh, think black pump fueled engines are past it? Well, take a look at the TDI units used here, all of which are now 2 litres in size. The detuned 116 PS version of the new 2 litre TDI unit that's replaced the previous 1.6 litre TDI power plant manages up to 65.7 MPG on the combined cycle and up to 113 grams per kilometre of CO2. And for the auto only 2 litre TDI 150 PS variant, the figures are up to 61.4 mpg and 119 grams per kilometre. By the way, that reading is around 10% better than that you'd get from an equivalent Ford Focus 2 litre Eco Blue 150 PS auto model. Those excellent figures have been aided by the introduction of so called twin dosing uh, catalytic converter technology, which features dual AdBlue injection, significantly increasing emissions cleanliness. With twin dosing, uh, AdBlue is injected upstream of two SCR catalytic converters arranged in series, with the result of cutting emissions of nitrogen oxide by up to 80% compared with the previous 2 litre TDI engine. All well and good, but what about the electrified and eco-minded engine technology that the industry is crying out for right now? Well, that's delivered by the Czech brand's latest 48 volt mild hybrid technology. And when Skoda can offer this across all this car's volume, engine and transmission variants, it'll be a really strong addition to the Octavia's portfolio of virtues. And that's because, according to the engineers, this so-called e-tech setup can improve your economy by up to 70 from launch, the effect of all this mild hybrid innovation on Octavia sales was somewhat limited given Skoda's decision to only offer it to buyers of the 1 litre and 1.5 litre TSI petrol models who are prepared to pay more for a 7 speed DSG automatic gearbox. Now in case you didn't catch our brief resume of the mild hybrid tech in our driving experience section, it's worth quickly briefing you that an Octavia E-Tech model uh, isn't any kind of Prius-like full hybrid. It can never run independently on electric power alone. Instead, the mild hybrid system's merely there to help recuperate energy and to add a little extra acceleration boost and to power the stop-start system. And that's probably where you'll notice it most. Uh, the start-stop range begins at just under 40 miles an hour so you'll often find an e-tech engine Octavia coasting up to the end of a traffic queue, a traffic light or a level crossing. As with Ford's mild hybrid engines this Volkswagen Group setup which also features unrivaled Volkswagen Golfs, Seat Leons and Audi A3s is based around an integrated 48 volt BAS that's belt alternator starter generator. This powers a 12 volt main electrical setup in which a 48 volt compact lithium ion battery in the boot stores energy that's harvested by a KERS kinetic energy recovery system. If you'd prefer a full hybrid with proper all-electric capability, then your dealer will refer you to one of the plug-in Octavia variants. These use the same 1.4 litre TSI petrol engine and 6-speed DSG auto gearbox package as features in the larger Superb IV. And as with that car, the 13 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery that drives the PHEV drivetrain's 85 kilowatt electric motor is bigger than the class norm. 
That facilitates a very decent WLTP all-electric driving range. It's rated at up to 37 miles for the base 204 PS Octavia IV or 34 miles for the sportier 245 PS Octavia VRS IV. Either way, if this Skoda is only going to be used for short commutes and recharged regularly overnight, it is conceivable that an Octavia PHEV could be run almost entirely without fuel. And conceivably, if you get your charging regime right, on off-peak electricity that hopefully will cost pennies rather than pounds to consume. The combined range of the petrol and electric motor is around 660 miles, which makes a plug-in Octavia an ideal, comfortable car for the really long journeys that would probably defeat full EVs like, uh, say, a Nissan Leaf or Skoda's own Enyaq IV. And it'll charge much quicker than a full EV. Powering up a PHEV Octavia from a domestic socket would take around five hours. If, however, you use a garage wall box, you'll be able to reduce that charging period to around three and a half hours. The charging connector is located beneath the cap in front of the front left door. What else? Uh, well, across the range, the usual efficiency tweaks contribute to the quoted WLTP figures. There's an energy recovery setup to reclaim energy that would otherwise be lost under braking or during cruising. And the usual start-stop system to cut the engine when you don't need it, when you're stuck in uh, traffic or waiting at the lights. Uh, with the diesels, you'll need to keep the tank for the necessary add blue additive topped up to keep within sight of the quoted readings. Uh, of course, uh, the figures that you'll achieve will depend to a great extent on how you drive, and that's another area in which this Octavia aims to assist you. Now, if you have a variant with the drive mode select setup, you'll have the option of an eco setting that'll tweak all of the car's systems for ultimate frugality. In addition, whichever Octavia variant you select, you can monitor its ongoing frugality via selectable consumption readouts on the left and right hand side of the virtual cockpit digital instrument binnacle screen or via the vehicle section of the center dash screen where you can select since start, uh, long term and since refuel readouts on economy. Servicing, uh, well, as usual with Skoda models, there's a choice of either fixed or flexible maintenance packages. Uh, now you'll choose the fixed approach if you cover less than 10,000 miles a year. And with this, the car will typically be looked at uh, around every 12 months. If your daily commute is more than 25 miles and your Octavia will regularly be driven on longer distances though, you'll be able to work instead with a flexible regime. Now that can see you traveling uh, up to 18,000 miles between garage visits or every two years, whichever is sooner. You can budget ahead for maintenance costs by taking out a fixed price prepaid servicing plan at point of purchase, which covers the first two scheduled garage visits. Prices start at around £500 for a three-year, 30,000-mile servicing package. Use the available Skoda Connect app and you'll find a proactive service option, which, when it's activated, can send all the data needed from your car in advance to your local Skoda dealership prior to the service visit. What else? Well, we like the fact that mist fueling protection is standard across the range, so you won't be able to accidentally put petrol into your diesel Octavia or vice versa. Uh, less impressive, though, is the three-year 60,000-mile warranty cover. We really can't see why Skoda couldn't extend that mileage limit to 100,000 miles, since that's exactly what you get on the mechanically very similar VW Group vans. Doing that, though, wouldn't, of course, give Skoda dealers so much of an opportunity to sell extended four- or five-year warranty packages. A five-year, 100,000-mile extension will cost around £650. You might, of course, feel that no extra cover is really necessary. After all, the brand regularly tops independent consumer satisfaction surveys. Um, according to real people, there are few more satisfying cars to own. Whatever your decision on the warranty, your car will come with three years of pan-European roadside assistance and that has no mileage limit. Uh, the paintwork warranty, uh, that lasts for three years and as you'd expect, this car is protected by a 12-year anti-corrosion guarantee. The Octavia PHEV variants have a separate eight-year battery warranty and that also covers the battery for up to 100,000 miles.
I will also mention that residual values are really very class competitive. If uh, used demand for this improved Octavia reflects that of its predecessor, then you might expect to retain around 45% of your car's value after the typical three-year ownership period. Typical TDIs have done a bit better, uh, as have the mid-range trim levels. We'll finish with a look at insurance groupings for the mainstream models. Uh, they are usefully below those of a rival Golf. These ratings start at 12E for the 1 litre TSI variant, uh, 18 or 19E for the 1.5 litre TSI 150 PS model. For the 2 litre TDI 116 PS diesel, it's 15 or 16E. And for the 2 litre TDI 150 PS auto, it's 18 or 19E. The Octavia name, based on the Latin for eight, is an almost inseparable part of Skoda's history. It dates all the way back to 1959, when it arrived to designate the eighth design produced by the Czech brand uh, following World War II. In modern era, guys, Octavias have certainly sold prolifically. Every 57 seconds, one comes off the production line at one of Skoda's five global plants. And in seven countries, this model has been a bestseller. Take all the Octavias so far produced, and if you place them end to end, you get a train of cars that would run for up to 20,000 miles. And that's the distance from Skoda's main Malada Bolasar plant to Sydney and back. But those sales, of course, date back to a time when this was a slightly smaller and much less sophisticated car. How will modern era buyers cope with a version of the Skoda that's quite a lot more expensive and sophisticated? Well, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, there's certainly lots to like here from a car that feels engineered to a depth that many rivals can't match. Even the trendy new digitalized cabin manages to deliver quite a mature blend of form and function. The fresh electrified engine options are welcome and the media features and the autonomous driving tech are cutting edge, as is the safety tech with up to 26 assistance systems available. Pleasingly, all of this has been delivered without diluting this model line's core attribute, namely more interior space than any other Focus or Golf segment rival can offer. To that practical perspective, this fourth generation design adds a welcome bit of polish now that's just as well, because this model is now far from being the cheapest choice that you can make in this class. Of course, not everyone will appreciate what Skoda's served up here, uh, primarily because the handling of this car remains set up to be sensible rather than involving. Now folk who appreciate the responsive virtues of, say, a Ford Focus or a Mazda 3 probably won't like it much at all. But that's not Skoda's core market. The Czech maker knows the kinds of people it's aiming at here, and it no longer wants to serve them as a value brand. That market will be left to the Chinese. Instead, this manufacturer wants a higher quality image developed alongside higher quality products, cars like this one. And the company looks forward to an era where the purchase of something like an Octavia is viewed not as a cheaper choice, but instead as rather a clever one that time may already have arrived. <laughs>